team for Sighetti. This Ash Wednesday, the Diocese of Brooklyn is jumping into a digital journey of faith. Last year's Lenten pilgrimage had parishioners stamping their passports as they visited churches around Brooklyn and Queens. This year, you can check in and join the community from the palm of your hand. Currency Jessica Eastope tells us how. Hi, Jess. Hi, Christine. That's right. You'll be able to do all of that and more on the Diocese of Brooklyn's Lenten Pilgrimage app. It's a way to stay connected on the journey, whether you're physically able to be there or not. Although the developers of the app say you might not be able to stay away once you download and get started. Take a look. It might be one of the newest apps available but its impact could last a lifetime. The Diocese of Brooklyn's Lenten Pilgrimage app is moving parishioners down a path toward the future of faith. We're going to have the digital passport, which is going to give everyone an opportunity to download the app. It can be a global experience. Father Joseph Jabino, the vicar for evangelization and catechesis, says the goal of the app isn't downloads and clicks, but to become a tool for engaging with the Lenten season. Some people have the advantage of being able to literally walk the journey of the pilgrimage by visiting the station churches. Others will now have the opportunity to digitally make the pilgrimage. The app, which is free of charge and available for download on iPhones and Androids, was developed by DeSales Media Group, the communications and technology arm of the Diocese of Brooklyn that operates Currents News and the tablet. It allows you to get direct updates about the Lenten pilgrimage and set goals and milestones as you pound the pavement to 40 churches across Brooklyn and Queens. Visits will be automatically tracked using QR codes posted at each church. We all know that real physical presence is the best, but this is a way for people to share and to know that we can pray together and experience each other's growth in the Lord through all these different means. Plus, there's a built-in prayer community. Users can post special intentions asking for prayers on the app that has a potentially global reach. Since we are a diocese of immigrants and so international, that international community can become part of our pilgrimage here. This year's pilgrimage is dedicated to Sister Marianne Ambrose, who Father Jabino says exemplified Lenten sacrifice and made it to every single church on the pilgrimage last year. She was a driving force last year making every one of the pilgrimage sites. She drove other pilgrims to churches. She talked about it. She wrote about it. She just became one of the human faces of the pilgrimage. This year's pilgrimage will last 37 days, not including the Holy Triduum that parishioners can celebrate at their own parishes. The pilgrimage will begin on Ash Wednesday at the Cathedral Basilica of St. James in downtown Brooklyn. And Christine, for those who still want a physical passport, they'll be available at every church. Oh, that's great. So Jess, this is a digital take on evangelization. Is the diocese hoping to reach more people this way? Definitely, you know, digital is where everything is going. And so because of that component, the diocese is hoping that the thousands who participated in the Lenten pilgrimage last year will also download the app, plus thousands more. And because, like I said, of that global component, you know, anyone in the world can download this app and also anyone can submit prayer requests and pray together. And so it really is something that has the power to connect people. Very cool, can't wait to download it myself. Thanks, Jess. Thank you. And again, you can download that Lenten pilgrimage app now. Just search Lenten Pilgrimage in the app on Google or Google Play Store and you can prepare for your journey across Brooklyn and Queens. Brooklyn Bishop Robert Brendan is also preparing for the Lenten Pilgrimage. In the latest episode of his podcast, Big City Catholics, Bishop Brennan spoke about the joys of attending the 2023 journey. Last year, there were people who made all the stops, or nearly all of them, and I was so encouraged by that. And it's generally all day. So some people came for the opening of the day mass and then the exposition. Some people came and just prayed for 15 or 20 minutes in the church during the course of the day. And some came later in the evening, but people would come and pray. And I got such positive feedback from the people who made the journey, who really found that a great Lenten activity. And so we encourage those who want to do that again this year. 
Bishop Brennan was able to go to all but two Lenten pilgrimage stops last year. You can listen to the full episode of Bishop Brennan's podcast, Big City Catholics, at podcast.dioceseofbrooklyn.org or search for Big City Catholics on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And of course, the Lenten pilgrimage kicks off on Ash Wednesday. Bishop Brennan will be giving out ashes at a mass at the Cathedral Basilica of St. James in Brooklyn. That's on Wednesday, February 14th at noon. If you can't attend in person, you can watch the mass live right here on Net TV. The Diocese of Brooklyn schools will be remote on Tuesday because of the expected snow. All students will learn from home on February 13th. The winter storm could bring five to eight inches of snow overnight with locally higher amounts by the morning. Catholic schools were at the center of the 124th anniversary dinner of the Cathedral Club. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Deacon Kevin McCormick, the diocesan superintendent of schools, was the main speaker at the event at the El Carib Country Club. He praised the work of the Catholic lay organization. The Cathedral Club of Brooklyn provides scholarships that allow students to attend Catholic high schools. Bishop Brennan and Deacon McCormick say that help is essential. This dinner, we can really assist um, individual students and their families and thus help keep the enrollment up. If we're going to be involved in all the things that are going on and make a real difference, we need also to surround ourselves. We need support from one another. And that's what the Cathedral Club is all about. Yeah, I, I can't thank them enough. I've come to these dinners for many, many, many years. And I see the commitment of the people who come here, not only at this dinner, but I also see them in the neighborhood. They're working in our school boards. They're, they're, they're involved in our parishes. We have great men and women here in the Cathedral Club that are doing wonderful things. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Two men who attended Catholic schools and helped young people in their professional careers were also honored at the dinner. On Sunday, Bishop Brennan celebrated the Lunar New Year. The bilingual mass at St. Michael's Church in Flushing helped kick off the Year of the Dragon, which symbolizes strength, power, good fortune, and success. Following the liturgy, Bishop Brennan joined the community in an ancestry veneration ritual where the congregation gives thanks to God and their ancestors. It includes bowing to God nine times and offering fruits, flowers, and incense. Bishop Brennan also gave out red envelopes with money inside, which symbolizes good luck. Turning now to the National Eucharistic Revival, its big event happening in July. The National Eucharistic Congress has become more accessible. The U.S. bishops have announced the Solidarity Fund, which will cover registration costs of the five-day event in Indianapolis for those in need. The scholarship does not cover the cost of transportation, housing, or meals. The bishops have already raised nearly $1 million for the fund, and they are accepting donations. If you'd like to attend the Congress in Indianapolis this summer and and you want to apply for the Solidarity Fund, just go to EucharisticRevival.org for more information. And finally tonight, the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl, so it's time for the bishops to settle their bet. Just to remind you what was at stake, the bishop of the losing city agreed to send the bishop of the winning city a basket of local goodies. So Bishop James Johnston Jr. of Kansas City, St. Joseph, Missouri, will receive a case of the San Francisco treat, rice a -roni, from Archbishop Salvatore Cordelioni. The bet has become common among bishops during the Super Bowl, but this year the prelates upped the ante, adding a donation to a pro-life charity of their choice to the pool. So a donation to Alexandra's house in Kansas City will also be made. The organization helps families of gravely ill unborn babies. And if you want to donate to that pro-life cause, just go to alexandrashouse.com and click on the donate button in the upper right-hand corner. That is this Current News Update. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.